everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, I wanna show you guys my jujubes because I've been really thoroughly impressed by them this year so far. Uh, there's a lot of time left between now and when they ripen, but some of them are looking great and they are actually are covered in flowers. Um, for this time of the year, it's early August. This is a good thing to see for sure. And they're also covered in fruit, which is really surprising. Like you can see that's a pretty decent sized fruit there and there's nice clusters of fruits on that one. Um, I have four different varieties here. We've over time really tried to get varieties that would do better in a shorter season climate because I know a lot of people that really struggle with growing jujubes in the ground in my area and they just don't have enough time in their season to let them let them ripen and I think growing them in pots is a huge advantage. Uh, for one, they look incredible. I mean, they've grown a crap ton for this portion of the season. It's insane. I think this this lee here, I mean, this is where the old growth was. This is where the new growth started this year. And this is where the new growth started over here on this particular branch. I mean, that is, I think, excuse the camera there. This is about four feet of growth in one year. And that's in a container that's pretty nuts and they really like to grow vertically by the way i've been struggling i really try to prune them quite hard to get them to bush out a bit and some of them have which is good to see you can see i think lee is really getting this pretty wide shape but it's not coming out this way or that way all that much the wind has been really blowing with it or messing with it now because it's blowing it over a bit but let me get you guys a different view here these trees really have just been rock stars. Look at this one. That's just really good fruit set on this particular variety. And I, I've learned that in containers, to keep their fruits, they really need a lot of water. Same thing with the, the Che here. The Che, the Jujubes, they all have a different drip emitter down here. If you can kind of see this. See that blue emitter right there? That's different than the figs, which the fig has a, a gray one because the, the figs really don't need as much water, I think, to hold on to their fruit. And also, I'm not really too concerned with the quality of the fruits of the jujube or the che because I really just want them to hold their fruit. And you can see the we've had a few days here of just irrigation woes pretty much and the che is again dropping all of its fruit for the most part uh, it didn't really look all that great today either like it looks pretty droopy and sad so I did water it by hand to try to save some of these fruits but again I think the irrigation actually was the issue this year I don't know if it really would have ripened with the help of my irrigation if it was perfect this year but I don't know, these trees, man, they're very difficult. They're very finicky. And I'm thinking maybe I should just dump it or put it in the ground somewhere. But the jujubes, I think, are fantastic for containers. If you can just keep them wet, they do really well. And here's why. I think a lot of people in my area really struggle with these trees. And if they put them in the ground, the soil just doesn't warm up quick enough. And they're like the last tree to wake up. You know, they usually wake up here maybe like mid-May, June 1st. So they're good in that respect in that they, they dodge all the late frosts. But these guys got off to such a crazy start. They grew exceptionally well. And now they're covered in fruit or flowers and should finish out the season really strong if I can keep these guys wet over the next month, month and a half. Um, they'll be in really good shape and I'll have a nice harvest in fact, they should actually dry up on the tree for me. I shouldn't have to pick them prematurely because this year they, they woke up April 15th. A lot, you know, along with a lot of the figs here on the patio is that we got everything out here pretty soon, pretty quickly. And the jujubes normally in the container will wake up again, like May 15th, you know, June 1st. That's like a month to a month and a half earlier than normal. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that we normally had bunched up all the trees, all the potted trees that we leave out here. Remember how we used to bunch them all up right here and cover them with straw? 
And that was a good way, by the way, if anyone's interested, a good way to keep these trees outdoors all winter time in a pot. You can do that very easily. Just group them all up and throw on a lot of straw and keep those roots cool but also warm. It really insulates them well and keeps them at an even temperature. By removing that straw and getting them out here on the patio, they actually woke up April 15th, before our frost, before our last frost. And, you know, I was a bit worried that they were going to get hit with that frost, but to be honest, they did it. And they woke up and put out a ton of growth, got these flowers out really soon. And I think, by the way, pollination is just an issue with these. I've seen a number of weird bugs on here, and I think they really help with the pollination, but... Um, they just don't really have, I think, the best set because of that. And maybe if I lived in a different climate with different bugs, I might have better fruit set. Um, you know, there's a ton of flowers for sure. Some of them are male flowers. Some of them are the female flowers. Up in there is a ton. You, know, you can see all these weird bugs flying around. And it always seems like these right here, whatever these guys are, I don't know if you guys can see them flying around. I don't really know what they are, but I think those are the ones that pollinate them. And they kind of look like parasitic wasps, actually. There's a wasp right there. But overall, I find that they do much better in containers than they do in the ground. If you can just keep them wet, get them out to an early head start here on the patio like I have. You know, get them outside, get that soil warm earlier. They wake up earlier and they have plenty of time to ripen their full crop. That's the biggest issue that people complain about here. If you put them in the ground, people always complain that they just don't have enough time to get them to ripen. Um, the soil doesn't warm up quick enough, like I said, they don't wake up soon enough, and therefore they just need really early varieties to get them to work. Things like Lee and Lang and sugar cane and honey jar. I have another one over here called Zuzhou that we just grafted last year. In fact, it's actually doing really well for me just grafting it last year. It's actually kind of nuts. Let me show you guys this. This is the Zuzhou, which is actually arguably more productive than the other varieties that are much older. You can see what's left over here is remnants of the flowers, these little brown things. And I don't know if this is a good sign or a bad sign, or maybe that you know, some of these flowers just didn't get pollinated on here. You can see some of them are now starting to shrivel, which is not a good sign. I need to get these, these trees a bit more water. We just watered them in. The irrigation, like I said, has been having a bit of an issue. But this guy is really doing well in terms of the fruit set, and especially for the size. I have a feeling most of these probably will not ripen. I think some of these will probably fall off if, uh, you know, if going off of what has kind of happened in prior years, but there's still a lot more flowers up here and it's really good to see. So I don't know if we're really done with the fruit set, but I'm happy to see that these guys are going to ripen much earlier than last year. I can get them, you know, at this stage here, we still have three months before our frost. So I should really have good chances of getting these to the right size and the right color. They should turn red and start to shrivel up on the tree. So again, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this. And I think growing, like I said, I think growing them in containers is definitely the way to be, the way to do it. Um, I think we should put one in the ground here, but like I said, I've had a lot of friends that do this, grow them in the ground and they just don't have the success. Um, you know, also I've heard they sucker quite a bit and so far mine don't. There is this tree over here that has and there's a sucker right there, but mine have historically not suckered at all and I think that's a big, maybe a big misconception with them. Although I have heard that other people have indeed been, been struggling with it. So it depends, I guess, on how you plant it or what the practices are that you're using to get these suckers out of the ground. So who knows, maybe I'm wrong on that, but uh, I would suggest really just growing them in containers. And I actually, I do like the fruit quite a bit and they last for a long time and they seem quite reliable. I think last year our crop was really not too great. 
The year before was actually surprisingly very good. So I think this year we should have a really reasonable crop and we could talk about more as they ripen or when they ripen. Uh, we could talk about the drying process again, the fruiting process, um, the fruits themselves. And uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed this one, stay tuned for more on jujubes. It is quite an amazing fruit. And yeah, we'll see you all for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys.